Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Big things continue to happen. I continue to be excited. We have this article here and it's titled Ripple Payments to Go Live in the U.S. Do they know something that we don't? It says amid SEC battle, we got a lot of important dates coming up in the final final steps of that battle, the final stages of that battle coming up beginning in, I believe, April. Do they know something that we don't? Does, is Ripple preparing for something? One can only speculate, of course. It says this American blockchain payments firm Ripple Labs Incorporated is set to launch Ripple payments in the country after three years of shunning itself from the region. Now, let's put some things together here. Now, number one, a lot of people will say is Ripple payments. Yes. But does that include XRP? I would think that as of now, with the standing of institutional use and sales, probably not at the start. But we know that Ripple also said they want the banks to use XRP. That's what they said. The articles are out there. It was their people that said it. OK, Ripple said that they believe the banks will want will want to use XRP. I believe that's almost verbatim from the articles that came out. We know that they were going after the commercial banks as well. We know that XRP is the best thing that they have to offer. Now, about the whole flip of the switch thing, you understand that the flip of the switch is just a, a phrasing to encompass the idea that everything functions better as a network and that the network obviously would have to have a multitude of institutions utilizing a, a particular protocol all at once in order for that network to function successfully, no different than SWIFT. So flip of the switch is just another way to say, hey, we need everything to go off at the same time for this to run correctly, which I think is just logical for any type of protocol that is being pushed or was made to be like, quote unquote, the bank's Bitcoin. That's just facts. That's the articles that came out. This is what Ripple said themselves. This is where they're pushing everything. This is why there's such a huge holding back of the skyrocketing of the price by the actions or lack thereof up by the institutions. If it was for retail, if retail was the primary uh, 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 the primary um, target for XRP. If retail was so gung ho about using XRP, retail would have pushed XRP's price up by now, but they haven't. They have not, right? So, Ripple being a very key element, in my humble opinion, to the success of the XRP uh, XRPL in a lot of different ways, continues to go after those banks. Nothing has changed negatively; it only has become better. And now you have something like this happening in the US after last year, they told people multiple times they were going after those banks. Now, let's also add in this, and I keep on putting this information out there, is as if people are just ignoring it, they just don't care. But go check out payment channels, payment and payment channels as a mechanism. I mean, I put all the screenshots on the, pay, on the multiple videos, but payment channels as a mechanism on the XRPL, don't let the name fool you, in payment channels, which is the fastest way to use the XRPL, the most secure way to use the XRPL. You can do payments in bulk or you can break them up into pieces through what they call payment channels. Now, with payment channels, you can only use XRP. And that's primarily what they're trying to push to a myriad of the banks. Now, there's no guarantee that the banks will use them. Of course, we don't go by guarantees here on this channel right? We go by possibility. We discuss a lot of possibilities, a lot of thoughts. I give some, some people from the members only section, they give a lot as well. And that's what we discuss here. Potentiality, possibility. There's a high possibility of these things occurring. You see the push happening. Now, why would you use, let's just use a little bit of logic here, no disrespect, but why would you use second rate Prod, uh, products that move slower than XRP, less secure than XRP, less interoperability than XRP. XRP is extremely powerful. That has never changed. But once again, in order to accomplish a lot of what could happen with XRP, you have to have all those hundreds and hundreds of banks that signed up for RippleNet or on-demand liquidity, all those different things, whatever it is. They've, they've congealed stuff and changed the name so much over the years. It's hard to keep up with all of the new phrasings for it, but you have to have them all come online at the same time. Now, the banks made it well known, like, hey, listen, once you're completely done with the SEC case, we'll step in or we'll consider stepping in. I'm paraphrasing, of course. We have to wait to see if they actually do that. It's one thing to say it, it's another to do that. Um, but I'm going to be honest, day to day, I'm just becoming more and more bullish on XRP. Now, 
Let's read a little bit further, just a little bit further. There's so much to cover here. There's so much going on with XRP and people's thoughts on XRP. It says, the, and you don't have to believe. You don't have to believe. You don't have to hold XRP. I'm not a financial advisor. You could sell all your XRP. It would not make a difference to me. It would not make a difference to me. I'm not telling anybody to do that. I'm just saying, right? So, and there's no timeline. I don't control anything. So I don't have a, I don't have a definitive timeline on this type of thing. You just have to, have to make up your own mind. You want to be an XRP, you be an XRP. You don't want to be an XRP. There's nothing I can do about that. I'm just, I'm, I'm a researcher reporter. I do a little research, I share some of my opinions. It is YouTube. And then I, you know, get a little bit of, give you a little bit of the news. So it says here, the majority of the company's operations are based outside the U.S., Owing, on, uh, owing to the ongoing legal battle with the Securities and Exchange Commission and the broader lack of regulatory clarity. However, according to a recent update, Ripple Payments is planning to roll out solutions for the U.S. in particular. Remember, now there's another interesting little tidbit here that I think should be added in when thinking about this. Remember that they can get around the institutional sales aspect. If they just have either companies or banks, I usually, my focus is the banks. Right? It doesn't mean everybody else's has to be. That's just my focus. All right. Not trying to convince anybody else to be focused on that. But you have large businesses, you have the banks, you have a lot of different entities that could use XRP. They can get around the institutional use aspect by just going directly to the exchanges. Like, for example, they can go to Uphold. I think Uphold put out a post like that where they said institutions could just come straight to them. Now, whether institutions want to buy directly from an exchange or not or set something up with them, that's up to them. I don't know that they're going to do that, but I believe that that is a a viable go around to uh, to to as opposed to buying it from Ripple and, you know, getting involved in the troubles that are there right now with the SEC and trying to get clarity on institutional use and sales of XRP. Right. So there are go arounds. So there is that possibility that maybe they're thinking about that, saying to themselves, like, hey, you know, maybe we could if this is intended. Of course, it's just my thoughts, my humble thoughts. But maybe they're thinking in that way, saying to themselves, listen, we could roll out. Now that we have this whole uphold deal and we have a whole bunch of other exchanges, apparently, according to their tweets, very uh, supportive of XRP to XRPL and Ripple. Maybe we could have those institutions just go to these exchanges and, and acquire XRP if indeed we want XRP to be utilized. Now, don't get me wrong, XRP at, was it 52 cents or something like that today? It went down to 50 the other day or 49, then it went back up again, you know, which is which I anticipated. These things always happen. But um, even at that that price with the amount that Ripple have has, most people will look at that and say, oh, Ripple's well off with that, you know, with that amount. Um, so they're good no matter what the price of XRP does. Like, no, no, Ripple is nothing without XRP. And why would you settle for 50 cents if you and I both know that if this thing goes high, let's say it goes to a dollar, two dollars, three dollars, you can make a boatload of money. Businesses are money makers. They're in the business of making money. And I'm going to tell you what, right now, there is no easier way to make money than crypto. You're going to argue that? What, what makes money easier than crypto when crypto skyrockets so fast? All it takes all it takes, and I, I don't think many could debate this, all it takes is the right catalyst, the right piece of news, and people would jump back on the train so fast it would be it would make your head spin. Um, and they know that, right? So, but to them, yes, because of the amount that they have, you know, it's not that they're taking their time, it's the SEC that's making everything take longer. The SEC, let's get that correct. A lot of people are, you know, uh, I understand how they could become upset with Ripple, but they're fighting the good fight. If Ripple had not done what they've done, then crypto would not be where it is right now, to be quite honest, as far as clarity and, and certain victories that have been had and that are coming. Um, so I think they've done a good job, just my personal opinion. But no, I think they have a vested interest and they definitely want XRP to skyrocket because then their company would be have, have much more capital to play with. Um, they would, uh, I mean, they would be able to do a lot more and who doesn't want to make some money? Um, some of those individuals are holding XRP. You think they're holding XRP just to have it at 50 cents or you think they want to make more money as money makers? We always want to make more money, whether we're individuals or businesses. I think that's just logical. You don't settle in business. You don't. That's just not how business goes. Um, we're always looking for a, a better way to make capital and trying to increase on our capital. A lot of you out there are small business owners. A lot of you are, you know, have been in the game for a long time, made some good gains. But you know this when you were in business and you were just making a million dollars, did you settle at a million? 
Did you just settle? No, you didn't settle at a million. No, you didn't. You kept pushing. You kept selling pro the products. Um, you kept making phone calls. You kept uh, shearing up relationships and bringing in new relationships. And you increased on that million. Did you? Yes or no? Yes, you did. Yes, you did. And um, over time, you, you want to keep building. It never ends. See, that's the thing with business. It never ends. You get a taste of that victory. You get a taste of that, that capital coming in. And you start to figure things out and you figure and you start to learn like, oh, yeah, I can build on this. I can take business further. Ripple's no different. None of these companies are any different, right? But we'll see what happens. You know, we'll see what happens here. So it says here, let's continue on. This is in interesting to me. Despite 90% of Ripple's business thriving internationally, this bold initiative marks a notable return to the U.S. market for Ripple payments. Moreover, this initiative comes amid legal scrutiny from the SEC that we know and the recent XRP hack, which was another interesting little piece of FUD where the first articles I saw said Ripple got hacked. It said, uh, yeah, it said Ripple got hacked like as a company. It, was in, it wasn't until later that I saw the articles where it wasn't Ripple. It was um, that one individual. I can't remember. Was it Chris Larson? That personal per, that person's personal wallet got hacked. But the articles took that opportunity to really, really, uh, you know, hit XRP hard. There's like right now, XRP is getting hit hard from every possible angle. And like I said in a video from yesterday, which I think was a great video, in my humble opinion, if you didn't see that video, you could just watch a piece of it and get the gist of it or just watch the end of it. I'm telling you. But everything I pointed out in that video is very, very valid. That's why there was a lot to unpack in that video. I just didn't put like a billion chapters, like three chapters. to just get you to the main parts of the video. But um, I think, in my humble opinion, there's a concerted effort to bring down that price of XRP the same way that they brought down the price of Bitcoin. They flooded Bitcoin for a long time, like two years straight before they came out. And now they're pro Bitcoin. I think the same thing will happen with XRP. It's the next in line. And I'm going to tell you what, a lot of people will say, no, Ethereum is the next in line. Definitely possible. When you when I look at Ethereum and I don't take into account some of the things that have been brought to light about Ethereum, I'm trying to be careful with what I say, then yes, Ethereum is number two in line, sure. But there are things about Ethereum that if certain entities choose to look look into it, if they pull the trigger on Ethereum, Ethereum will have some problems. If you know, you know, like just do your research, you're gonna find it out. So listen, I'm not against Ethereum. Ethereum is a money maker. I'm all about making money, but I gotta be, I have to be careful at the same time, very careful at the same time. So when I take that into account, I say to myself, with the clarity, the clarity that XRP has, I think XRP is the next in line where they're looking at taking it over, dominating it at some point in the future. When in the future, I don't know. When moon, I don't know when moon. How can I tell you that? Like that's financial advice. I can't give you financial advice. I don't know when moon. Um, I'm, I'm in the same boat with everybody else, except that maybe some people have been holding much, much longer than I have. I haven't been holding it long enough. I haven't been holding it for seven years, eight years, things like that, that people claim, you know? Um, so everybody is different. Everybody's different, just like people have been holding for different amounts of time. So it's going, that's going to affect you, I guess, you know, I'm diverse, I'm diversified, highly, highly diversified. So, you know, realistically, um, I enjoy researching XRP. I, I enjoy researching it. But if I wasn't researching it and, you know, talking about it in videos, um, it would just be on the cold wallet and I come check, can come back to check on it every once in a while. Um, so now I'm throwing out a lot of thoughts out here, but I'm trying to give you as many thoughts as I possibly, I possibly have. Um, but I'm super bullish on XRP. That Nothing has changed about that. Nothing. I have XRP. I hope that goes off. I have XLM. I hope that goes off. Algorand. I already saw that go off a couple of times. I'm ho hoping it goes off again. And to be real, XLM went off that first bull run. Um, I'm bullish on Polygon. That went off a couple of times as well. I'm hoping it goes off again also. I'm bullish on Solana. I have Solana. All these things I have. All these things I have different degrees of it, but a lot of them I'm in really, really, really deep with those. And so it doesn't take a whole lot for an individual like myself to make some very good gains. You get what I'm saying? Um, H bar, same thing. I have a ton of H bar. I believe in that project. Um, Zenfin XDC. I have a ton of Zenfin XDC. You don't even hear me talk about some of these things all the time. I just every once in a while cover them. Like I said, this is a research channel, not an influence channel. So whatever I have fun researching, that's what I do the most. 
All right. Um, I'm trying to think of what else. Chain link. I'm super bullish on chain link. I got a ton of chain link. I got a ton of Solana. Like, so I have some Bitcoin and I've been increasing my bag exponentially at certain points. So if Bitcoin goes off, I definitely want to make some money off of Bitcoin. And um, I, and I want that bull run to begin. Right. For a lot of us, it'll, it'll be over in that next bull run. This, that's a done deal. Um, so I'm excited about it. I want that to happen. And that's just a few. So when I say diversified, we're going to think differently. This is why I laid this whole uh, thinking process out. We're going to think differently if a person, let's say, has been holding for a super long time. And then some people may only have a few coins, a few Right. Or some people have some significant money that they need that that affects their life. They're going to think differently than someone else who that money they have in, let's say, XRP or something else is not significant to their life. It's not super significant to their life at this time. Right. So we're going to feel two different ways. There's a lot of different people in this these um, these communities. So. I just think it takes a little bit of understanding that everybody's different. We're all coming from a different place. You know what I mean? Um there's a lot of up and comers that I'm super bullish on as well, but I won't speak on them too deeply right right now. But one of them just did insane gains. Like if you picked like one of the one of the, the up and comers, I'll say that if it, it went from 0 0.008 and at one point in the past, it was like 0 0.007 all the way up to like uh, uh, north of a penny. And that was substantial gains. But like I said, that would depend on how much of these up and comers that you have, these micro caps that you have. If you have a ton of something, it doesn't take a crazy price. Remember, I kept saying that if you have a ton of something, it doesn't take a crazy price for you to see very, very good gains. And that's another, another thing I don't think people um, take into account. But uh, like we're, we're all different. You know, we're all different. That's that's, that's what I, I have to think about that because I see all these different comments and such. So now let's continue on here. It says, uh, despite 90% of Ripple's business thriving internationally, this bold initiative marks a notable return to the U.S. market for Ripple payments. Moreover, this initiative comes amid the legal battle. Okay, so, you know, we'll see how that works out. We'll see what part in the future uh, XRP has to play. Because like I said, at first, if they're rolling this out before there's a settlement or something like that, then I'm not expecting them to use XRP unless, unless they use that go around. Like I said, in the businesses or banks or whoever wants to use XRP goes through the exchanges. That That's the only way I see that happening. So we'll, we'll see how that manifests into the future. Okay, so now we're going to move on to a little bit of XLM news. So. XLM, they put out, or Stellar, they put out their SDF Q4 2023 quarterly report. I didn't re I didn't cover it the other day. I want to go to the report, go to page 25. Listen, my humble opinion, this is not about anybody going out there and buying Stellar or buying XLM. That's not why I, that's not why I cover XLM. Okay. All right. I just want to make that clear. This is not financial advice. All right. Go to page 25. Stellar is in a very, very powerful and dominant position. And this is before, this is before overall clarity for crypto in the United States or globally. Imagine what they're going to be doing once there's overall clarity, which you have the BIS calling for. You have a myriad of other very powerful centralized powers calling for this global uh, uh, clarity on crypto, global regulations on crypto. Stellar is going to be an absolute beast in the future. Just my humble, humble opinion. All right. But it says this. Listen to this here. Page 25 says creating greater access, fostering development for easy to use, accessible and cost competitive on and off ramps globally and apps that use them. And I've been waiting to hear a little bit of updates on things like this. So this was very interesting. Let's get into it. It says. Headquartered in Spain, Bitnovo went live support for Stellar's hosted deposit and withdrawal standard. This provides yet another option for developers building solutions on Stellar to connect a cost efficient global on and off ramp solution. This means that Stellar, that any Stellar wallet, which all of them use XLM, right? You have to have a modicum of lumens to use Stellar. It says any Stellar wallet that has a pre-existing deposit and withdrawal integration, example, MoneyGram access, can now seamlessly plug into BitNovo's Fiat Rails. 
They've been building these rails all over the globe. It's been very impressive in my humble opinion. Then it says here, what is noteworthy about Bitnovo is their broad geographic coverage and range of accepted payment methods, including physical cash and select countries, enabling Stellar wallets to offer cost effective financial solutions to their users. So Stellar only got more powerful. I don't even remember hearing about this. This is very good, but that's not all. That's not all. Now, this is the part that was interesting, and I want them to really, really take advantage of. They're beginning, so I'm giving them some time. We'll see if they, they expand on this. MoneyGram Access. It says here, the MoneyGram Access service allows wallets or applications to enable users to convert their physical cash into digital dollars and back, even if users don't have a bank account. That's not the interesting part. This is two, two new wallets. Remember I was saying, I want them to put wallets everywhere. I want them to put wallets in everybody's hands. When we have clarity in the United States and that Ripple case, definitely, that's another thing. That Ripple case, it is significant. It's very significant because you need the institutions to push things and they can't. Even We, we even read some documents. I can't remember who it was that said it, but we were reading some documents from some, some sort of banking officials or or. or banking president or CEO, something like that. And they were talking about the uh, legislative headaches. Remember that? That was recent. Legislative headaches. They don't even want the headaches that come with some of what you could do with crypto, but then they would get in trouble for it, right? Well, using it in certain ways. Hence the institutional use and all that battle going on with the Ripple versus SEC case, right? You got the Coinbase case. You got all of this stuff still going on. Crypto is still in a battle still, all right? But you want those institutions, you want your, your product to be able to be pushed at banks. Why would you not? You want your product to be able to be pushed at these businesses, uh, you know, for payroll and things like that. But it can't right now. That's huge money. They like, Don't get me wrong. OK, take the retail money. You could take you could get retail. Stellar Stellar is doing a great job going after retail. But that could even be increased on. That's being held back as well because there's no clarity. They can't play like they want to in the United States outright. You want Stellar to play outright. Don't get me wrong. MoneyGram stuff is great, but you want Stellar outright putting ads in different places, promoting Stellar-based wallets everywhere because they can, and they will. If they say that they're a blockchain for the people, then they have to at some point advertise to the people to let them know what they have. But they can't right now. It's pointless right now if it's going to cause trouble, right? But listen to this. Two, two new wallets, Meru and Island Pay, went live with MoneyGram access this quarter. So that's very good in my humble opinion. They said this quarter. That's very good. Keep you know, uh, allowing companies to build these wallets or whoever's building building these wallets, offering things that the people want and need, because that's going to come in handy in the future as a long term. That's how I feel as a long term holder of XLM. All right. And they're, they've been doing a pretty good job, in my humble opinion. So we're going to continue to keep updated with these types of things right now. This was very good news today, in my humble opinion. I appreciate every single one of you being here. So now that you have that information, what are you going to do with it? I know what I'm going to do with it. So until next time, let's get to the Monday.